Uh, Ruben Granich, who does not need an introduction to this group, one of the remaining six people working in the HIV TV <laughs> office, <laughs> at least as far as we know. Uh, <laughs> um, but who has a, a very strong background in TB, having worked in India for a long time, and he's going to sum up this discussion. I'll do my best. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank Julio and the co-organizers for having a TB session. I think it, I think it's fantastic. And um, I also wanted to, um, and we're very grateful. I also wanted to thank all of you. And you know, when I was before I came came in, I was I was going out and getting the coffee and getting a little bit of uh, cake or whatever because I was thinking we're going into the kind of the meeting in the jet lag death zone in terms of the last session, the last day, and and also we're you know I'm flying in from Geneva, so I'm a bit tired. But but I think this is a great session, really really dynamic. And I, I do agree, maybe we should have had it earlier because it, it really did seem to fire people up. And maybe I uh, have the feeling as well that uh, another day would be, would be good for all of us. And that's an amazing feeling to come, come, to come out of a meeting with. I have five very, very quick points. And I'll try not to speak too quickly, uh, although when I get excited and passionate, I, I tend to accelerate. Um, first thing is that, and it didn't really come out, but a HIV associates a major problem. And this is something that's not, we can't ignore. It's airborne. You hear the force, you see the force of infection. You're talking about infecting 10 to 20 other people if you have TB. Uh, so this is something that's not going to go away. The other thing is that it's very clear from the observational evidence and, and other evidence that ART reduces TB incidence. It's on a gradient. It has to do with your immune system. Uh, and that leads into the next point, the third point, and that is the when to start question. That's the one that we're all, um, and we have an expression in, uh, in southern Oregon where I grew up, high-centered. And high center is when your truck goes along and you get kind of, you're on the road, and then all of a sudden there's a set, the center of the road's there, and then your truck just goes up and your wheels start to spin. And I think that's where we are on the, uh, we're high centered on the when to start question. And what I would say to try and get us, get us out of that, or what I would say, or, you know, thinking, looking forward, the when to start considerations, I think it's very clear, should include TB considerations. And in the past, they, they kind of have, but they kind of haven't, and they should include TB, uh, inter TB considerations in terms of treatment and prevention. So, you know, when you have TB, when do you start ART? And I think that's becoming crystal clear. It should be for everybody, and we have that in our WHO guidelines. But then, you know, how do you prevent TB? And preventing t and WHO has very good guidelines, if I might say, or I think they're reasonably good on how to prevent TB. Most people don't follow them, but they include the three I's: infection control, isoniza prevention, intensified case finding. And now we're increasingly thinking about using ART to, to do that job. And I think we all need to, to read those and, and think about that. The fourth point is that we heard community voice. And I, I, it took a little while for you all to warm up and get, get into it. But I think it's super useful, very, very useful to hear this, you know, Mark Harrington coming through and hearing, I'm, I'm not going to name everybody, but hearing that opinion and, and checking in. And it's very difficult. It's much easier to fly to Vancouver from Seattle, all right, I think you can drive. But um, then to fly from Zambia, and to get Paul here from Zambia, I, I won't go into the details, but it, was, it, it wasn't easy. And we, but we need to listen, um, li listen to the affected community and, and people who are impacted by these sorts of things and, and hear what they have to say and, and make that dialogue. Sometimes we don't speak the same language. Sometimes we don't understand each other. But we, we really must continue to try. And then um, the final point, which I think came out from the whole meeting, is that you know, controlling TB is going to require HIV elimination. And I use the words um, advisedly. I'd CDC trained and all these things, but um, I say TB control. I don't talk about TB elimination. TB elimination is going to take, you know, a long, long time, maybe hundreds of years, 50, I don't know how many years. But um, I, and I use HIV elimination advisedly as well. I think actually HIV is el eliminable, is that a word? Um, and I think that that's what we should be going for. We shouldn't be going for HIV sustainability or, or these sorts of things. So, but neither one of those things are going to be achieved in these high burden countries uh, without the other. So we're, we're locked in the room together, the TB community and the HIV AIDS community. And you can hear there's a little bit of tension. And there was tension on the call. And people are like, when do we change the guidelines and, the, and these sorts of things? But we're locked in the room together. Neither side will have success uh, unless we collaborate. And we're working on the collaboration, but it could be a lot better. Uh, and I think that it's very, fairly clear that ART for prevention uh, is part of that solution. And I don't know what, how big a part of the solution is, but I think it's probably pretty significant. And, um, uh, we need to work together to kind of maximize what we have and what we will have in order to take care of both diseases, which are, are a major problem for people living with HIV out there. Uh, so that's it. Quick five points, and I hope you have uh, safe travels and, and a good trip home. And thank you, Julio, and for organizing.